morning, I'm Nils. This video is not intended as and should not be taken as medical advice. I should say first that this video is a little speculative. It's an attempt to sorting through information from a number of different sources and studies. I'll also be sharing some information and ideas which are purely anecdotal based on my personal experiences. I should start out by saying that I love getting out in the sun. I try to spend 20 to 30 minutes soaking up the sunshine on my back deck whenever it's not clouded over. I like getting full body sun exposure, so I wear tan through shorts when I'm in a place where I might be seen by the neighbors. They let the sunshine in while providing a little privacy. I, just like most folks, I like lying out in the sun in a, maybe in a zero gravity chair or maybe just standing in it. Sometimes I will rotate around in circles. I can get sun exposure from all sides. I usually just kind of kick back and relax when I'm getting sun exposure. My videos are focused on longevity. So I should say that on the one hand, there is some evidence that people who get a lot of sun actually live quite a bit longer than those who don't. For example, there was a 20-year study in Sweden which found that women who get out in the sun a lot, these are actually women who liked tanning for hours in the sun, that they are healthier and that they live between seven months and 24 months longer on the average than people who don't get outside and are kind of afraid of the sun or are afraid of sun exposure. And that study was in women, but it seems probable that the same would be true of men. But with that said, it is also true that sun exposure is associated sometimes with problems such as skin cancer. And maybe even more importantly from an anti-aging perspective with the depletion of NAD+. From an anti-aging point of view, the sun is a stressor. Some of the wavelengths in sunlight, the UV rays in particular, can cause damage to our DNA. The more sunlight that we're exposed to, the more, D, the more NAD plus is removed from our bodies. So one possible solution to that is to get our sun exposure in the morning when UV rays are less intense. But of course, that's not always possible. So I wanted to look in this video at other things that we could do which perhaps might protect ourselves and even protect our NAD plus from depletion so we can benefit as much as possible from the sun exposure that we're getting. The reason that NAD plus gets depleted when we're exposed to UV radiation is apparently because the body is prioritizing repairing the DNA damage. So again, you have to think of sunlight not as either good or bad, but possibly both depending on the context, right? When we're exposed to the UV radiation, either from the sun or other sources, the body uses the NAD plus that it has on hand to protect itself. It doesn't worry <laughs> about the fact that it's depleting our NAD plus. It just says, I've got this, I'm gonna use it to protect against and repair any damage that the sun might be causing. So the good news is that there's strong evidence that when we take derivatives of vitamin B3, such as NR, nicotinamide riboside, or NMN, nicotinamide mononucleotide, that this can protect us against UV damage. And that the NAD, which is created from those supplements, because those are all precursors to NAD+, and then when we have enough of it, it will be there to help our cells repair the damage. And there should still be an excess left over for other functions in which NAD plus is needed in the body. NAD levels, or NAD plus levels, drop as we age. So for example, my NAD plus is probably naturally a little lower now at the age of 71 than it was when I was you know, 21 years old. But I can replenish it by taking NMN or NR. I take 500 milligrams of NMN most mornings. Sometimes I'll also take some NR, maybe 350 or 400 milligrams along with it, or sometimes I'll just take one or the other. So I'm gonna go back to sunscreens for a moment. 
Sunscreens claim to block harmful radiation, and to an extent they do, but there are a couple things to be aware of, and one is that they're not 100% effective at doing that, and another is that many commercial sunscreens have come under criticism for being, number one, ineffective, or and number two, according to the FDA and some other sources, actually being toxic to the body. Some actually contain carcinogenic compounds, and remember that we are slathering the, these on our skin, leaving them on for hours, and many people have expressed the concern that what if these carcinogens are being absorbed into our bloodstream? What is the long-term effect of that? Um, I actually noticed years ago, actually way back when I was in my 20s, that I felt sick whenever I would use sunscreens. I just felt toxic. I felt even a little bit nauseous. So I stopped using them many decades ago. I'm not saying that you should stop using sunscreens. What you do is completely your business. I'm just saying what I did and what the reasoning was behind it. So what I'm doing instead is taking the NMN and NR that I talked about, but I'm also taking a compound, a supplement called astaxanthin. I take about 16 to 24 milligrams a day. There's strong evidence that astaxanthin protects against and helps the body repair sun damage, especially from UV radiation. I'll link to a couple of studies below this video that you can follow, you can use to follow up on that if you'd like to. So I also personally consider astaxanthin to be an essential anti-aging supplement. I take it daily whether I'll be going out in the sun or not. So is the combination of NMN, NR, and astaxanthin a complete solution? Is it protecting against the possibility of skin cancer, for example, as well as a sunscreen might? Uh, the honest answer is I don't know. As I mentioned, I have various reasons that I decided not to use sunscreens. I'm hoping it'll be as protective, but there have not been any direct studies uh, comparing them. Uh, so anyway, there are things we don't know. I do know, though, from my own experience that I used to burn very easily. I had many painful sunburns when I was younger, like when I was a young guy in my 20s, when I'd go out hiking, and I'd come back and I would sometimes be badly burned and it would take two or three days to get over it. And I'd be in a lot of pain. I couldn't even uh, climb into my bed at night. I'd have to try to sleep somehow <laughs> without lying down or sitting up. It was pretty weird. Anyway, since adding astaxanthin to my supplements, Again, this is just my experience. Your results may vary, but I found that I can spend two hours, three, four, five hours in the hot sun wearing nothing, or maybe wearing nothing but sandals and shorts, and I don't burn. Now, my skin does get a little pink after a few hours of direct sunlight, and my skin does feel a little warm to the touch, again, when I've been out in the hot noonday sun or, you know, or directly overhead sun for hours but I don't burn anymore. Now, I should also clarify that I'm not saying that I just can just pop an astaxanthin capsule or tablet, just run out into the sun and I won't burn. I found for myself that I have to take it for about two weeks for it to reach a high enough level in my bloodstream for it to have that protective effect. Um, and so one other thing I wanted to say is that when I say I turn a little pink, so one question some people have asked me when I said that is, is it possible that that pink color might indicate some sun damage? Even if I'm not burning, maybe I'd be setting myself up for skin cancer down the road. And I don't think so, but again, I don't know. There haven't been any studies, any long-term studies to clarify that. The pink color, I can say, has always gone by the next morning. My skin is back to feeling cool to the touch the next morning. And I suspect that astaxanthin is protecting me at least as well as sunscreen. And I know that astaxanthin in nature it is there to protect the algae that it's harvested from, from sun damage. They're actually exposed to the sun when they're being cultivated just to make sure that they're very rich in astaxanthin. And so I am hopeful, I feel pretty sure that taking it may be a way of getting all of the benefits of the sun without any of the possible harm, as well as, you know, shoring up our NAD plus reserves because the astaxanthin, again, is preventing the DNA damage. 
and it's that DNA damage that makes our bodies rush in to use up our NAD to try to repair it. Even if I ever went back to using sunscreens, which I suppose might be possible if I could find one that was effective, that didn't have any carcinogenic chemicals in it, then I would myself go on also taking astaxanthin and NR and NMN at the same time, just for kind of full coverage. And again, my goal would be to be able to get all of the benefits of sun exposure with none of the possible drawbacks. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, nothing in this video is intended as or should be taken as medical advice. I am not suggesting that you or anyone else use astaxanthin, NR, or NMN apart or in combination to protect from sunburn. It's very possible that your experiences might be very different from mine if you decide to do so. Again, that's not something I'm recommending, and doing so would be at your own risk. Thank you for watching. I look forward to seeing you in another video.